you screaming is right where you're supposed to be. Hey, buddy. Thank you, man. You weren't that perfect, buddy. Philip Culpepper, he come to work at Realtree, 16 years of age. And I'm telling you, passionate. I love turkey hunting, but you're looking at one of the best turkey hunters, if not the best turkey hunter in the country. I remember as a kid, me and him would go hunting. I taught him a few things, but he's teaching me now, and I'm proud of him. Somebody talk about him, you're talking about me and my family. I'm coming after you. My name's Philip Culpepper, and this is why I love turkey hunting. Son of a gun, look at the hooks on these brothers right here. Since the age of eight, I've watched them flop down the barrel of a shotgun. Happy times here in Georgia. And through a camera lens. Yeah. Uh -oh. Straight right to the right of the pine, right here on the bottom. I've made some fly off that I ain't seen since. That was on me. <laughs> the old double barrel Daryl. <laughs> Over the years, I've been lucky enough to share the woods with some incredible turkey hunters. Good job. Ones that have taught me it's about so much more than just pulling the trigger. Man, old angel looking down on the ceiling. <laughs> These are the core values that Hunt Club was built on, and this is our story. Y'all, come on and go with us. Rose, come here. The other day there was two gobbling right off in that bottom. One day I came out here, there was four long beers strutting out there. Bunch of under here one day. Early March, yeah, they that's a month to them. Oh, that's like you know you made it. They were gonna listen off the back porch and just drive up to the big house in the morning. <laughs> exactly, exactly. It's hard to get mad when I say I'm gonna hunt in the morning and I walk out with my coffee cup, and my underwear, and then I'm like, this sucks. Then I walk back in and thinking. It ain't too sucky. It's pretty good. <laughs> it wasn't in here in distance of my house. Oh, yeah, out. two of them. Oh, okay. See, I told you we need two guns. Now, what the hell? We, this, is, this is why I knew this house would be a good listening spot. Oh, yeah. And they're not gobbling at daylight. Yeah. But that's why I didn't we get... We stood right here. That's why I'm glad we didn't get too quick in a hurry, you know? He's strutting right here. Mm -hmm. If you get up here, you can see him good. I'm wondering if you do the old go-to-school approach. They're going to come to that point, probably. Philip was sweeping floors, packing boxes. I would just see you hovering who's this, around. Who's this 50 year old you, kid annoying the hell out of me? Like you've been there looking into the TV and video department, like, I want to see what's going on in here. A year, this is a year and a half, two years before I ever picked up a camera. My truth thing is just like, man, I just got to pick something up to figure out how to kill a turkey well, better. I mean, if we talked, it was about turkey hunting yeah. or, or Hank Jr. <laughs> we're looking, we're just, we look like we're waiting on the school bus, guys. One hand, they ain't said a word. And you know they were right there. Yeah, yeah let's, let's just, let's go. Obviously, I started real true when I was 15, 16. That's right. You know, that was road start trip. road you trips days. Work, road trips was starting, yeah. Right, you know, that was in the first year where it really took off. We clicked, but it's always been that passion of turkey hunting. For whatever it oh, is, yeah. it's just the funnels back down to the basics, to where it's just that true passion of, that's all you think about, I mean. Everything branched from that. Oh yeah. That was it, I, and that's what I liked. That was kind of rare, because people who are diehard turkey hunters, you either are astute of it, or you just hunt them. I remember you know, like, man, you know, calling, and what calls you use, and. I've even had some people say, man, you, you, your Yelp sounds a lot like Michael's, where I was logging out footage during, cause during turkey season. I was paying attention to every scenario, you know, what happened to where it was almost like I was out there hunting, but I could sit back and look at everything, analyze everything yeah. between screw ups, what worked, what didn't work, you know, to where to me that was where I was getting my high from it, like just trying to pick up the edge and then being able to go and apply that. They typically come right out that drain like you're talking about, Philip. Sometimes they'll come up toward the house, but they're going one way or the other. These turkey, I'll take this in case they get weird, but I'm just saying go right down there and set up. Yeah, it's burnt. Yeah, I gotta come out around the point. They'll come, they'll come around that point. Boy, this took a drastic change. We went from absolutely not hearing a turkey to two strutters out here. And look how pretty this burn is. Well, if we could get to right there. Yeah, we'll be good. I mean, they got to be. The burn's open, though.
No, they're, 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 they're only 60. They're in range. Okay, come here. Go crawl right in. Crawl right in. Don't stay low. Stay low. Hold on, shoot him again, shoot him again, shoot him again. Shoot him again. Same one. Shoot. Ooh, hang on, hang on. Got it, buddy. <laughs> I'm a terrible shot. I'll tell you that much. Hey, me and you got more in common than I thought. Good <laughs> job. I gotta work on that. <laughs> That's why they make three. My arms are. Tired, my abs are tired, dude. Oh my god. <laughs> is he shooting at? I didn't know. That is terrible. Shoot, man. But he's dead. I, I, it, took me, dead. I took me four shots the other day on one. <laughs> what I had to reload. Sure, I'm glad you put three in there. Yeah, that's why you always take three. The other one was still standing there. They just like, I guess they thought it was a car that backfired. <laughs> <laughs> like I said, I learned it from your daddy. As long as it's legal, you take it how you can get it. You it don't take matter. it how you can get <laughs> you it. You got a dead turkey. Congrats, buddy. Well, he might be three, but... I'll have to listen to the podcast. There we go. You got him. Coy got Did one, you? yeah. I'm good. And more importantly, you got any buttermilk biscuits? No. <laughs> <laughs> you can't fix your own damn breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> I know I killed one. I know, out the front door. Out the front yeah. door. There was some cake or something to the left. There was. I didn't know. I, I, I didn't know. First, first, yeah, when you first hit, they pulled up a little bit. No, I didn't see your I picture. I just got it. The old detail scout mission. <laughs> <laughs> I'm where they're at. <laughs> and look at the cat looking yeah. on. You better make sure I get video credit of being the guide. My boy is getting a couple hours to hunt with me. Now me and you, our job is we could have spent all day after McCoy went to school, all day. And we could just said, you know what? Only one tactic, Philip, let's do it. Get this 410 one shot and let's just do it this way. Well, what we got to lose? It's our freaking job. Somebody's right. working at the mill. Somebody is a freaking sheet rocker that gets, you know, maybe to nine o'clock and they gotta be on the job site and they still got a boss that's pissed off. You know what? I could give a crap if I'd fanned him in, if I reaped him, if I crawled on him, or, or Philip, who's a good caller, yepped him all the way across the freaking hayfield. I don't care. I just wanted a good experience with me, you, and McCoy. Oh, I agree. Gear it down, people. Gear it down. I killed a turkey with my son and with a, a great dear friend that I actually saw grow up in Philip. I've been hunting him, been hunting with Philip since he was this age. I was a lot younger and less gray, but. Me and Philip have about been hunting together since, since I, I, you were your yeah, age. I was he was about 17. Spring break. And, and Philip was just, oh my God, I ain't never seen somebody so eager to kill anything and, and eager to learn. And heck, me and you both. And I remember I never had any technical aspects about camera equipment or computers, and I knew you didn't either. No, but no, I, knew that, I knew that if you had the passion, you know, you could figure it out. And, and it wasn't long into it, you become hella great camera guy. And David would let you go on a few trips to try it out. Uh, oh, let's, yeah. let's see if this guy can do more than push a broom and pack a box. I'm all right with this tree. I'm going to shoot. I see him coming. Man, that Hurstboro turkey you video, that's still probably one of the most 
if not the most memorable that I have. We never would have tried what we did had we not probably already had a, because back then we were like, we got to get a good hunt. Oh, we weren't killing turkeys, right. we were videoing turkeys. Right, yeah. where we were like, hey, the other one's gobbling. And I remember we was like, Mike, let's just try to get as close as we can. Yeah. Let's just sit on the same tree. Felt. Shot the top of that turkey's head completely off. I remember it plain as day. And after that, man, yeah, we, we started hunting a lot. You was a good hunter. You had a good instinct for the woods. And I was like, all right, I, I want to hunt with Philip. <laughs> Ever. He's way bigger than I thought he was. <laughs> Look, he just ripped up a tree this morning. Me and my dad never thought of turkey hunting, but I remember uh, my Uncle Morgan said, you ain't gonna believe what we saw down the corner. I think I said Bigfoot, Black <laughs> Panther. <laughs> Mountain lion, UFO, I named everything. And I remember he said, no, nah, I saw a wild turkey. And my dad, uh-uh, a turkey? <laughs> no, you ain't seen no turkey. Well, it wasn't long after that, my dad was riding through the sweet potato patch, and he thought it was buzzards, and it was two turkeys. And he still tells that story. Every time we were at the sweet potato, <laughs> first turkey I ever saw was right here. I thought they were buzzards. He tells us every time. I've seen this track going in right by that lighter stand. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Hey, we don't know to go see. I remember in the sporting goods store hanging out. And he's like, well, well, we, we, we've been seeing a turkey or two. And they said, well, they back here. And I remember my dad like, well, what do we do? The guy tells us to get an owl hooter. And we bought a little Ben Lee, little whoo, 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 you know, a little, yeah. like, sound like a dove. And, uh, and dad bought a Lynch foolproof box. And literally, I remember, I remember reading him the directions. Like, it's a yelp, it's five or six notes, and cluck is this, a purr is this, a whine. And we go back there. Steps one through five. Yeah. So that spring rolled around, it was open day. I never forget, I had an old, a, a bulldog named Boog that it followed us, you know, one of them dogs, you follow you wherever you walk. And I never forget, plain as day, my dad, that gum Boog done follow us. And my dad said, get out of here, Boog. And he's kind of, ah, you know, get out of here. We ain't blew an owl hooter or nothing yet. So my dad picks up a little bitty rock and was gonna throw it at him to like run him back yeah. to the house. Well, he threw it at him like a pretty solid medium fastball. Well, hits him right in the side. And when he hits that dog, like that right there, like the dog finally trots on back toward the house. I said, Dad, did you hear that? He said, uh-uh. I said, darn turkey just gobbled. You kidding me? That was the first one y'all First heard. one I'd ever heard gobble. Woo, 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 woo. You know, 
and we sat there for 30 minutes blowing that out hooter like we was gonna kill him, you know. <laughs> Just intrigued. And we eased down in there, and um, that dude had told us, said, man, get as close as you can, but don't bump him. And then Dad got to call him a little bit, and Turkey gobbled a few times, and where I'm sitting there looking like, I, you know, I don't know, I mean, I don't know why I ain't coming. I, I just thought they were supposed to come in. We'd only been there 30, 40 minutes, you know, not long. Right. And I was like, man, I don't reckon he's coming, Dad. And he said, I don't know, he ain't gobbled a long time. By the time we heard a shot off in the distance, and boom! I mean, that turkey gobbles, and he's right there. And I mean, about the time he gobbles, I get down on the gun, and I'm looking, and I see this turkey's head coming up over the ridge, and it was white, and I could see white and blue. And I'm colorblind, so I don't, red, red is just brown to me, I don't see it. And I said, that sucker's white and blue, and I saw shiny neck feathers. That turkey just gobbles, like, that's gotta be a gobbler. Oh, I shot. Turkey was flopping around over and got him, and, and it was a Jake. And dude, my dad and I were jumping up and down and oh, hugging man. and five-fiving, and we threw that turkey run back, showed Uncle Morgan, rode him around all of Manchester, Woodbury, just on cloud nine. And I was addicted. All right, me and old Culpepper checked back in. We come close this morning, both of us, but now we're back in here together. Let's not mess this up. I know it. Which is usually when we say that is when we know we're going to mess it up. I just remember going down the road to the Georgia Peach calling contest. That's right. I, and I, was, just, I was obsessed. Like, you got to help me with my Yelp. That's gotta, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> that's right. Because you called in that contest, yeah. wasn't it? I think yeah. you did too. Yeah. I was like, I think I did. vision, and then yeah, I think you did open. Yeah. And calling contest days were crazy all around Georgia, all through Alabama. I mean, we'd drive to Illinois. Obviously, Grand National, you had a world championship. And every contest you went to was packed. Yeah, that was good old days, man. Didn't have no money. I, I, I did a lot with Ricky Joe Bishop. You know, I was just out of high school. I didn't have any money, but Ricky, Ricky was doing well. But Ricky was tight, man. Like, he didn't want to spend no money. So we'd, we'd stay in a Red Roof Inn. We'd look for the cheapest fast food. Right. Ricky was one of the premier callers. And so it was good to be with him because he taught me a lot. But uh, if he won, you know, he would have a bunch of money. And I'd come home, yeah, I'd come home with like a fifth place in a canteen or something. And, and a baby wing. Yeah, and a, and a couple coupons to the Waffle House. A lot of pressure. He saw one strut. Wish we could get in that ladder stain. You'd for sure know where they're at. I don't know where they're at. He kind of took you under his wing. Yeah, him and Mike Middlebrooks, and it got to where actually Mike Middlebrooks, he would call Ricky Joe and myself both would made up his trailer. He lived in an old trailer, and we would go over there and call. I mean, and, and sometimes we'd do it three or four days a week. I was just out of high school, you know, so I was. Like, I, I mean, it was like football. Oh, it was like football yeah. practice, and we would do our whole routine. We'd draw numbers and do our kiki run, and do our fly down cackle, and we would listen. Then we'd critique each other, and then we'd cut calls and. We would buy condoms all over the country. It wasn't like you jumped on Amazon and right. ordered all this you blended latex you... and propolastic. You didn't do that. So, so the only place to get latex at all in any quantity or, or quality was a condom. So we would literally like collect them, go to gas stations and <laughs> put quarters in and, and pop them out and we'd lay, lay them out and cut them up with razor blades. And I remember plain as day, I remember I bought this one particular condom that was a glow in the dark. And, um, and I remember cutting it up, and, and it was just a regular cutter call, just like the old Paul Butsky. Mm -hmm. You know, wasn't a lot of the, you know, combo cuts and stuff like that, just a simple cut like a horseshoe out the side. And it was a glow-in-the-dark condom, i never forget. And I went and competed in the world championship with it and got second place with it. Right here, that right here. Good job. He's walking late, he's strutting, walking late.
not as far as they say. No. They're just in this, this what? That turkey right there is close. Close. I can stay back. Yeah, that'd be badass. Classic Culpepper. Classic. That right there was like a bull elk, son. Me and him both cut down on them a little bit and they come on through that multi-floor rose pedestals, privet hedge, multi-flower buck brush. And after that, it was over. Good job, buddy. Oh, thank you, good job. Hey, that was classic. That was just, old school. He just kept calling and he was back there. Oh, you know, I noticed them when you started hitting them close and when they, they broke and then it just kind of finished them. How fun was that? That was freaking like old school. Wow. Whose property is this? <laughs> no, I'm sure. That's like, dude, that's like that. Thank was, you, Mark Hick. Oh, yeah. Dude, that's like, that's like the early 2000s type of hey, Good job, buddy. Good job. Good job. Good job. I don't think people realize the turkey part of things. I mean, I can name almost any hunting personality, and most of the ones that I know that, that I like the most, even though they might be that. known to be an elk hunter, they might be known to be a deer hunter, they really got their start being a freaking hammering on the turkey calling right. circuit. Mark Drury, Mark Drury is world champion. You know, everybody thinks of the big bucks, but Mark Drury definitely was is a turkey fanatic. He's a turkey man. Pretty is a speckled puppy on a red fire engine laid up against this deadfall. Got a little bit of his beard. Seven beards. <laughs> I'm playing. He's not. Look at the head on these things. That's the first Iowa turkey I've ever touched. Is it really? Yeah. It's not mine. That's a good one. <laughs> good job, buddy. That was fun, man. That was classic. Good job, pal. You killed him. I tell everybody, I say it every time. I, you know, people ask me, two most common questions I get about turkey hunting is, how many turkeys have you killed, Waddell? Mm -hmm. And I just simply ask, say, not enough. Right. And they'll say, well, who's the best turkey hunters you know? And always say, Philip Culpepper. If you gotta have a turkey shot, if you need somebody to get a turkey and you've got access to Philip, then you're gonna have an opportunity. No, but thank you, but again, you and you were a part of that foundation. I, it's an honor to even be sitting here with you. So thank you for everything. Same, and, hey, and same to you, buddy. We're gonna keep hammering, hopefully. Keep on them. <laughs> Makes you feel any better when Philip started the conception of Hunt Club. The first partner he got. Auto load, something that will cycle and give you three shots.